evening. Welcome to Lost Track of the Episodes again. I think it's because we took so long of a break. I was doing really good at remembering every week what episode we were on, but I have no idea what episode we were on. I think it's 66. I could probably look it up, but it's not really that important. Since we kind of changed the format of how we're doing things on the live show, it's not as important. And plus, we're kind of like winding down the rest of the year, and so we're not really doing much of like a series. I've kind of just been covering stuff um, each week, you know, come some of the stuff that's just been in the news and uh, kind of just trying to carry us through to the end of the year uh, when we can start a like a new series, get picked back up uh, consistently because I know there's a lot going on right now with traveling, holidays, all of the above. So Merry Christmas in advance. Next week, I think we'll probably do Monday night because um, Christmas week and everything. I want to do it before. Um, Jason, thank you for stopping by. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, I want to do it before Christmas, um, because I have an idea for, I don't know if I'm going to get to it on Christmas or the following week to do like a New Year's Eve type show, but I've got some stuff in mind. Um, so there definitely will be shows the next couple of weeks. And then starting in January, uh, we are going to do, um, what's up, Derek? You like that title? I, could, I tried to think of something clever that's that's gonna get pulled on the rankings on YouTube and because it's a it's a it's a it's a search trend right now so we'll see what happens uh, but yeah so that's what one of the things we're gonna talk about <clears throat> is uh, Netflix we're not gonna talk about the theology of Netflix however we are going to uh, talk about one specific title um, I'm sure you've seen um, this in the news uh, there is a um, it's a Christmas special on Netflix, and it is a Portuguese-language Christmas special on Netflix. Miss Robbie is here, too. Hello, Miss Robbie. This is um, basically depicts Christ as being a homosexual. Um, it's called The First Temptation of Christ. Uh, let me Actually, let's just get going. Let me just click over. I'll show you real quick what I'm looking at. Um, so this is the Washington Post. And this is the, it's a, it's a still from, it's, 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 I don't know, it's, I don't even know if I want to call it a movie. Because I think it's like 45 minutes long. I have not watched it. I, that's not at all something I'm going to watch. However, I've, I've read about it to know what, you know, they're, what they're teaching. And so it's not like necessarily a critique of like Netflix is not something that's going to produce solid theology. Like we're aware of that. Like that's not the issue that's in question. I think the issue is um, I've had a lot of people that have messaged me this and asked uh, specifically to cover this topic. So it's, it's, it's known. There's a lot of people that are aware of what's happening and it's getting a lot of attention. So that's why I wanted to mention it because, and that's kind of why the title is there. Netflix is now, I mean, they're, I hate to say it, they're endorsing this theology. So a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about uh, in my circles, we have, um, I mean, can you imagine if they had done a, a, a film or parody or whatever about Islam? If they had done a uh, a parody about Buddhism, can can you? Um, I mean, the outrage that would happen, um, it would be taken down in moments if it even made it. I mean, you know, again, the 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 absolute audacity to think that would even happen. Um, that that's what we're what we're seeing here is is, and I I know, I'm sure you've seen the Hallmark thing too, and they're I mean, that's not at all what we're talking about. Like that, because I think is like an entirely separate issue. But like what we see here is Netflix is Netflix, okay? And what they have done is they have endorsed a completely heretical film because everything about it, there's nothing truthful in it. And it's not like, okay, so you know how in like The Passion of the Christ, for example, and even Paul the Apostle, that movie, the, the, the storyline is not 100% accurate because they've got to make it into a movie. But there's, they're not changing the message. Like, the message is still accurate, but they've added things to make it, you know, a movie. They had to. 
that's fine. Like that, that's, that's, they're not detracting from the message. What they're doing with this is they're completely changing what the, the Bible is, is saying about who Christ is. They've now endorsed this. The title says Gay Jesus in a Weed Smoking Mary. And this has received, I think, like a million signatures to it for it to be removed uh, because of the content and, you know, because of, uh, uh, of if it's offensive. I mean, it really, I mean, it plain and simple, it's offensive. But take it a step further than that. As I was saying, I've had a lot of people that have messaged me and said, you know, can, can you believe this? And no, I, I mean, I, I can't. And in the same breath, I can believe it. Um, it. It doesn't take long to look around at, you know, mainstream TV and media and, you know, all of that stuff to see that it's okay to pick on Christians. It, it, it is. Um, it's just, that's just what happens. It's, you know, I mean, Scripture ex- tells us to expect it, and so it, it's not something that should come off as surprising. However, when something like this happens and so many people are talking, it's worth mentioning for a specific reason. And, and this is what I was thinking about. As I was thinking about this the last couple of days, I knew that I was going to talk about the Founders documentary, which we're going to spend the second half um, talking about. Um, our good friend, just to let you know, Tom Askell, he is at home. He's recovering. He's doing well. Um, he had a, a pretty bad fall and it was a pretty scary situation, but he is, uh, thankfully home. Praise God. He's doing well. And, um, hopefully we see him back soon, but his ministry founders, their documentary that when we had Tom on the show, um, a couple of months ago, that was the day that the trailer came out and then everything just, the internet burnt down. And so now the documentary is out. And so now the people that have been so critical of it can finally see what they were talking about. So my wife and I, over the course of two days, have worked our way through it, and we have a little bit left to work through still, but we're, we're through about 75% of it. But I, I want to bring it up in the second half, because it's just, it, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I, I just, I was like five seconds into the movie, or the documentary, and I paused it. I was writing down all these notes and stuff, and uh, like... There's so many good quotes, and it's just really good. So we're going to talk about it in the second part. But the reason why I'm bringing this Netflix fiasco up is because what's happening here is so many people are talking about the theology of this, okay? So many people have uh, messaged me and said, you know, the theology is poor, and it is. I mean, it's just, it, the heading is poor. Like, like it's just... It does not take long. Like, you don't have to do a bunch of exegetical work to realize that this is bad stuff. And it's not just a little off. Again, it's not like Passion of the Christ stuff where they add things that aren't really in the story to make it like a movie. That's not at all. They've completely changed the biblical message of who Jesus is to fit an agenda. The The bigger picture is so many people are aware of this air in theology. And are pointing it out and are telling others about the air with this theology. And so that's why I said the title Netflix is dipping into theology because they are, they, they have now we have so many people that are pointing out on Facebook and, and so many other, um, the Facebook groups that I'm in. I mean, it's just like people are just going nuts and they're, you know, they're, they're, they really have some, some, some words and, and, and I don't blame them. Um, I, I don't blame them. The, uh, the thing that I've had conversations with some people about, though, is this. Um, how come we are so quick to critique Netflix and their poor theology, but we are so slow to critique the church? Okay. What do I mean by that? And I don't have a specific conversation in mind, so so don't try to think I'm, like, subtweeting somebody through my show. Like, that's not all. Like, all the conversations I had were very positive. Uh, but it got me thinking. Like, through these conversations, it got me thinking. So I honestly, every day, get a, a, a YouTube comment. I get a Twitter message. I get a Facebook message. I get something, okay? Somebody, and this is not me bragging, okay? This is not me bragging at all. Um, somebody messages me and reaches out to me. For, for 
whatever, okay? And honestly, lately, there's been a lot of guys that have just been emailing me and, and sharing like really long emails that I've never c connected with before and just sharing how they've been blessed by the Ministry of Theology Nights. And that's awesome. Like that is just, that, that's to, to help others grow in their theology is why, you know, we, we, we do what we're doing here. But on the flip side of that, um, and I've shared it with a lot of people. I, I see um, Derek, for example, is here, and I've, I think I've sent him some screenshots of some stuff. Um, I get comments, people just laying into me, up and down, up and down. There's, you know, all kinds of names, you know. Um, somebody called me a white supremacist a couple days ago. Um, I mean, I have people that watch videos from a long time ago um, that they're pulling stuff out of context, and uh, they're just, you know, they're they're... they're Critique me. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not above reproach. Believe me, I have I have 170 videos on my YouTube channel. It does not take long to find out what I believe. Okay, I am not like silent about what I believe. I have no problem with that. So the 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 critique of what I'm teaching, I welcome it. I really do, and and I mean that. And if you know me, you know I mean that. But my issue though is these people, okay, are so quick to defend whoever I'm critiquing. OK, whether it be Bethel, let's just say we've talked about them before. Uh, Uncle Bill, we've reviewed some of his sermons before. We've we've talked about him. We've talked about Beth Moore. We've talked about Jesus culture. We've talked about Bethel worship. You know, on and on and on the list goes. Um, and I have so many people that rush to their defense. OK, well, they're not that bad. You got to give them the benefit. of the, Who are you to judge? Blah, blah, blah. You know, all the, the lingo that, that you get. And, and and it's and it happens a lot. It really does. I mean, I've 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 had some battles with people over worship music. I mean, I, yeah. but but Netflix, it's fine. Let them have it. Like like let them have it. And Netflix is a secular company. Like like they're not supposed to represent the gospel. They 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 are are they're they're, they're a secular company. They're not a church. They're supposed to get the gospel wrong. Like, does that like? So, so that's what I've been thinking about. Like, like, why is it okay for Netflix to receive so much like critique, which they should? I, I, I rightfully agree, hundred percent. But then I move forward uh, from a from an apologetics, uh, from a uh, discernment standpoint of um, you know critiquing the the most important teaching, which is coming from the church. Um, we're so quick to defend and give them the benefit of the doubt. And now, to a certain extent, I understand that because it's the church, you know, and, and believe me, I've had conversations with people and um, there are a lot of hills that I'm willing to die on. A lot of things that I consider to be first here. Um, a lot of things that I consider to be essential. Um, I am always just you know talking about this type of stuff always engaged in, in theological discussions um good and bad you know i i people again they'll they'll watch a video don pascarella is here no way don pascarella it's good to see you i am I'm always getting messages of people that have watched an episode of mine and, and, and they'll critique the smallest little word. I mean, honestly, like it's, it's stuff that, yeah, there's been times that people have critiqued my stuff and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I, I, that was an error on my part. Absolutely. But, but then I've had people that have critiqued my stuff that are, they're just like, they're just reaching. Um, but we're able to have, you know, like it, like an engaging conversation. We're able to, to talk about, you know the the theology that is there. It's 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 not a it's not an issue of that. But man, I tell you what, the second you go and start attacking some of these people, it's um, it it's like with certain evangelical. I'm not going to name names. I'd like to name names, but I don't. I want to save uh, some energy until uh, the second part because that's what I really want to talk about is the founders documentary and why it's important. Uh, but I'll tell you what, um, there's certain. Um, there's certain teachers, uh, in, in the, the evangelical world and, and, and I mean, you cannot critique them at all. 
says, you are just wrong no matter what. And how dare you? And you're a, you're a, you're slandering this person and you're um, you, you, you're not following church discipline rules by you're not going to them. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, that just makes me nauseous. Like people have put stuff on social media. Like, listen, like you don't got to go to their house and confront them about their error. Like you can call them out plain and simple. Um, that, that, that we're applying something that is, um, we're, we're applying something that is to the local church on to Twitter. Like, it, no, no, my teachings on there. Call me out. Like, like I don't ever like any of these people like that. Call me out. I don't ever say to them like, Hey, listen, like, here's my address. You want to come over and, and sit and talk and we'll do this in a, in a normal way. Uh, and then if I don't receive it, you can come back later with one of your brothers. And then if the, the, then I don't receive that, then you can take me in front of the church and tell the church. Like, yeah. And Furtick is one of them. That's not the one I had in mind. It's a female. I'll say that. And it's not Beth Moore. That's all I'm going to say. And that really gave it away. But there are, you know, certain people that will, you know, like they, they, as soon as you start talking about them and you critique their teaching, that's already on the internet because I'm the one that's critiquing. I'm now in, I'm the problem, you know, I, I'm the problem, like not the teaching itself. Like the, the problem is the critique of like, you see, like, and that's the, the thing I'm thinking about with Netflix. Okay. Is it's, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's great that so many people are speaking out against this really it, because, because people are aware of the, of the air in theology. Now, granted it's a very obvious air. So it's not, I mean, I, I would, I would hope everybody recognize that it's very obvious and, 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 it seems that way that people are, um, but people are calling it out, you know, and, and a lot of people have called it out and people are canceling their accounts and, um, there, there are, um, petitions going around to have it removed because it's offensive. And, you, you know, again, I mean, like we were talking about it at the beginning, like, can you imagine if it was another religion that they, they did this? I mean, it, it would just be, it would be on the news 24 seven. It, it would just be Netflix would be labeled as, um, uh, hate crime, hateful, whatever term you want to use. They, they would just be, they'd be destroyed, but with Christianity, um, uh, it's okay. And it, and it, and it's really like this, this documentary is, is poking fun at, at Christ. It's, it, it's not, um, it's not a little off. It, it, it's, it's, it's making a, a mockery of, of Christ. And, and, and that's really wrong. But I, but I am, I'm, I'm grateful that this happened again because it brings about the awareness of theology and it brings about the awareness of critiquing theology. And it brings about the awareness that we need to be vocal in our defense of right theology. And I specifically have the church in mind like that that's what the target here is yeah call netflix out listen like if i had a netflix account i'd cancel it like i like i would i you know i can't in good faith pay for something that is promoting this type of garbage can't do it you know and then i've had people like well if you start doing that then like you're wearing shoes from blah 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 blah. like no we're not going to go down that route like like there's a difference between willingly promoting theology that is that is heretical and supporting companies that aren't Christian. Okay. Um, th there's a big difference there, there. There's a big difference there. So, you know, again, if you want to say like, I'm going to keep my Netflix and, and like, that's fine. Like, uh, like that's not a problem at all. Like I get it. Like it, it it's not a problem. Like you're still like, you're going to like, you're saved. Like don't quite like, if you have Netflix, like that's not going to, that's not like a mark of salvation now. Like, Oh, you haven't, you're not saved. If you, if you it's not that like, that's fine. Keep it if you want to, but if you want to cancel it, I, I'm in full agreement with that. I'm just saying, like, don't use this as a way of being like, well, puff out your chest and say, well, what about all the other stuff that you support? And and you're going to cancel Netflix, but you're still going to do all of these things. Like, it, it, again, it's not I would be willing to bet that if any company did something like this, that the out the outcry would be the same. You know, it'd be the same. We do it with TV shows. I mean, think about it. Like, you don't watch certain TV shows because if they're contrary to the biblical message of the world, you don't watch them, plain and simple. I mean, you, you know, you shouldn't. Like, if it's if it, it, you shouldn't. But again, this this Netflix issue has has now caused um, 
has caused discussion again around theology, around the importance of right theology, but not in Netflix. Like that, that's what I'm trying to get at. That's why the, the reason why I brought all this up is because it's not important for Netflix to get their theology right. Um, cause they're not going to like, no matter how close they are, they're still going to air because it's a secular company. It's a business. They're, they're there to make money. The only reason that they're promoting this is because they want to make money. That's all. They, they don't, they don't want to make a, a movie about Christ. So people come to Christ. They, they don't, that's not their message. That's not their job either. It's not their responsibility to do that. Uh, it's our responsibility to do that. But that's why we contend for theology. That's why we, uh, we labor and we care for it so much because it's, that's our, that's our calling. Um, you know, so many people are under this facade of theology is only for the professors and uh, the pastors and things like that. And uh, while there is a certain level of higher calling that we have, um, it does not excuse others. Um, it does not excuse others from not doing theology. Chris, and that's an excellent point. And so Chris said, if you're on Facebook, you won't see his comment. It says, it also should encourage us and remind us what we see in Romans 1. And that is so true because I think often we're quick to forget what those opening chapters of Romans say. Um, we're, we're so quick to run to like chapter six and, and then move throughout the rest of the book from there. Cause there's so much, there's so much good stuff in there, but we, um, we, we forget that the, the first couple of chapters paint, paint a pretty dark picture. And, and that's what, that's what we're, we're experiencing, right? That, that, that's what we're, you know, you know, since they didn't seem fit to acknowledge God, what does it say? God gave them up. There you go. Do what you want. That's what, that, that, and that's, you know, again, this, this is like it, it, um, I don't know if you've seen the meme of Pam from the office, her face, like she has this, like this shocked look on her, like her face. It's just awesome. It's, I, I might try to find it and show it to you instead of paraphrasing it. But like, we, like we shouldn't be shocked when we see stuff like this happen. Like we, we, we should be like, yeah, that, that's exactly what it should look like. Um, you know, it, 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 it's wrong. It, it, it breaks my heart to see Christ represented and, and that poor of a, of a light. Okay. So then now like empathize with me when I see this stuff happening in the church all the time, when it is, when, when the type of stuff that's being promoted throughout the church is just as bad. That's why, uh, you know, I think about like, I think about the conversations that I've had with guys that are here right now. Like, that's why we're talking about this stuff. That's why we're doing podcasts and that's why we're doing videos and that's why we're teaching online. And, and that's where there's, there's, there's such this tight community of people that are, that are contending for the faith because we see so much air. And I think it's, it's because a lot of the guys that are in this circle of people that I've become really close with over the year, a uh, year and a half or however long we're, we're similar in age and we, the internet has just been a part of our lives for so long and, and we see what's going on and we understand that the internet is a mission field. It, it, it really is. And there is a lot of work for good that we can do through social media. There's a lot of good that we can do through blog articles and podcasts and videos and stuff like that and, and teaching online. There's a lot of good that we can use that for. And 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 what it does, because again, people are going to Google and they're typing in Netflix Jesus. Like I was looking at the search trends and like it's crazy. Like that's why this stuff's so important. Because like when Kanye West was was he's kind of fizzled a little bit now. Um, he's still in the news a lot, but when he first was in the news, the top 10 trending searches on Google were all related to Kanye and Christianity and people were just going nuts over it. So that's how people are getting their theology. A lot of people are getting their theology through the internet. They're not getting them through a pastor. Um, and th th they're not reading, you know, systematic theologies. They're, they're going to Google and they're typing in, what does it mean to be a Christian? And the stuff that comes up is just again we've talked about this so many times before it's not good like like it's 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 not it's not good and so then when you see netflix has this you know this comedy special or whatever you want to call it and and people are now they're they're being they're being exposed to to this and they're having to like ask themselves like well why is this like what's so wrong about it like like why is everybody freaking out about it 
What what what's wrong with this message? And, and we need to be able to provide an answer why. But then in the same breath, when um, Pastor So and So down the road makes a completely false statement, we need to be able to to critique that and explain why that's false. And 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 then we also need to be open to um, receive that type of stuff too because. You know, you know, again, if we're going to pile it on Netflix, go, that's fine. Go right ahead. But we need to also be focused on what the important thing is, and that's the teaching that's happening inside the church. You know, you know the, the, um, we're not going to paint like a doom and gloom, like the church is, you know, the church is going to win. We know the end of the story. But the, the, the church, you know, right now there's, there's, I mean, depending on where you live, um, you can get a different answer of what it means to be a Christian. To take it even a step further, depending on where you live, you can get a different definition of what the gospel is. And and that's that's not good. We did that show a while back. Um The Legionnaire. Uh, when was that? Gosh, that was a while ago. The state of theology. That was last year, end of last year. And we went through those questions and uh we talked about um you know, people had given answers to um is somebody with the littlest bit of sin, are they still going to go to heaven? And the answers were, you know, I mean, the, for the most part, all of the questions, that the answers were overwhelmingly wrong. Like the majority of people, and, and remember, these are professing Christians that answer these questions. And their theology was just, and we're not talking about like, you know, define what does Daniel 7 mean in the overall context of the historical grammatical redemption theory. Like we're not talking about anything like that. Um, we we are Nick Campbell is here from his personal account and from Christ is the cure. So let me just say shout out specifically to Nick for driving the view count up even more because his two accounts are here. I appreciate you, Nick. There are um, the, the I just saw his comment here. There there's there's so much more rage from Christians over secular individuals. I mean, think about it when Starbucks, um, think about when they are, um, they're doing their Christmas cups or whatever. Uh, and, and a couple of years back, I remember seeing people just lost their minds because they weren't doing those cups anymore. And they're not, re- you know, they're not representing, cr- um, Christmas in a positive light. And people were just, l- just losing their minds. Like Starbucks is in no way at all a Christian company. In fact, they're probably the exact opposite. And because of their cup selection, uh, people lost their minds. Um, again, I'm not trying to like say like go and attack every church that you come in contact with. Because first of all, that's not at all what we're called to do. And second of all, it's exhausting because I've been in seasons where all I've all I've I've been able to see is is the 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 doom and gloom, the the the, the, the all the bad teaching, and that has crowded my vision. And, uh, oh, my wife is here with two accounts also, man, Nick, you got to get your third account or, I mean, man, if everybody gets two accounts, our numbers are just going to go through the roof challenge for the first of the year, create a second account, log in with both, watch them from now on. Thank you. I appreciate it in advance. We are, we, we, we've got to get to, I'm going to close with this and then I want to talk about founders. Um, we we can't consume ourselves with all the false teaching. You know, again, live in the Bible. Like like know the good stuff, know the true stuff, because then you're going to be able to spot error real easily. Uh, you're you're going to be able to. I mean, that's how you grow in your passion of Christ. Like ultimately, that's what your goal is: is to grow as a follower of Christ and to to love and and uh, and, and treasure Him more. And and you do that by right theology. You you do that by immersing yourself in the Bible not by immersing yourself in false theology. Because again, it'll just drive you into a pit. Believe me, I was there. I've had seasons like that before where I've spent a lot of time critiquing poor theology and, and is consuming myself with all that stuff. I highly advise against it. I highly advise against it. So, all right, that's the Netflix special. So moral of the story is cancel your Netflix or you are not a Christian. You are um, just some flaming heretic and may God have mercy on your soul. And I, of course, am kidding. You can keep your Netflix if you want to. So the next thing and the exciting thing is by what standard 
Um, God's World, God's Rules, the documentary from our friends, friends at Founders Ministry is out. They received um, so much support that they were able to release it for free. They, um, it's just on their website. Go to their website and you can play it. It's an hour and 50 minutes. And listen, like I said, um, we're not through the whole thing yet. We will, um, we'll probably finish tonight. I think, I don't know. I, I always do my edits and stuff like that after the shows and everything, but we're, we're almost the whole way through. So again, let me set the stage. Um, the, the, and I have like, I have goosebumps. I'm serious. Like this is just I, like, like I got, it amped me up. It really did. <laughs> Talk, listening to Tom Askell say the word ideologies like makes me want to go and preach so bad. I don't know why, but when he, when he, when he, when he's just talking about you know critical race theory and resolution nine and all that stuff, and and I like he was saying it on the show, like I remember it, like I can hear it so like. But he's talking about it in the documentary. But anyways, let me let me set the scene. What's going on? So, Doctor Askell was on the show a couple of months ago. He came on the show just so happened to fall on the day that the trailer was released. So it was, it was really crazy. Like people were freaking out over the trailer. It was like a two minute trailer and, and, and people lost their minds. And we had, you know, a, a really good conversation. I was, I was, I was just blown away. And since then um, I've gotten to, uh, you know, I've talked to Dr. Askell before he, he has, um, he's, he's been a friend and, and, and I'm grateful for, um, the encouragement he's given me behind the scenes and stuff like that. I'm, I'm really grateful for it, but I, I am more grateful for uh, the work that, um, listen again, I'm talking to you before about, you know, my hundred and 200 views on my YouTube uh, channel videos, like pale in comparison to what Dr. Askell gets and the amount of critiques that he has been receiving. Uh, I mean, it's uh, and for him to be willing to stand so firmly on the truth, and um, he's just man, I, I love that guy. I, I really appreciate his ministry, uh, and and Dr. Longshore too at Founders. They they do such good work, and and I'm grateful that Founders is is receiving the. Um, I, I'm I'm grateful Ross is here. Uh, Ross, we're talking about the Founders Ministry documentary. By what standard? If you go to founders.org, click on Founders Synodoc up at the top. Let me actually just show you real quick. Up at the top, I can't go up any farther. You can't see it. But anyways, go to founders.org and you'll see a link there. Uh, it's it's so that's what I was getting into. So the documentary is about the uh, critical race theory resolution nine from the Southern Baptist Convention uh, this past this this year. They 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 just did this. Um, let me also preface: most of you know this. I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. Um, so I, this is, I'm speaking on behalf of like, I'm, I'm a Southern Baptist, so I'm not like an outsider. Like this, this influences me, uh, you know, directly, like, like my wife and I are, we're Southern Baptists and, and we're a Southern Baptist church. I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. I'm ordained Southern Baptist. I go to Southern Baptist seminary. So, I mean, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. This documentary came to be because of the, um, the, the 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 social justice movement that has just become so crazy over the last couple of years, uh, but what's really become popular is critical race theory. And critical race theory, I'm not going to do an exegetical study on it because I will not do it justice in des in describing it effectively. But basically, what cri uh, critical race theory is is it is a worldview um, that you apply to culture, and then you view culture through the lens of critical race theory. Uh, it basically says that if you are a white person, you are racist. There's nothing you can do about it. There, like racism is like this force that just is out in the universe and it's just moving around and doing whatever it wants to. And you are exposed to that because you live in a critical race theory world. Therefore, you are a racist no matter what. You could be the nicest person in the world to people of color. You're still a racist. So Southern Baptist Convention... Uh, they basically adopted Resolution 9, which was to use critical race theory and intersectionality as analytical tools for um, engaging culture. Okay, Now, Southern Baptist Convention has been very vocal about social justice. 
They've been very vocal about racism. They've been very vocal about wokeism. They've been very vocal about that's why this documentary was needed. The um, the, 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 resp- the the response to the documentary, it's it's just, you know, again, I, I am like, like I'm not. Like I'd critique something if it was wrong. Like if it was if it was just bad, I'm not going to say, "Well, it's Tom Askell and he was on the show, so I'm going to defend him no matter what." I mean, I'm probably going to do that, but I'm at least going to critique it. The feedback before the documentary was even released. I mean, they had pinned these guys as they were taking them out and burning them on stakes. Like they were just, you know, they they were saying you were they were attacking people and then and they were slandering people and they were doing all this and it was a hit piece on Beth Moore and 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 I think like we're what? Maybe like we have I don't know, maybe 40 minutes left of the of the doc or something like that. Maybe a little bit less. I've seen Beth Moore two times in in in, in the whole documentary. But Beth Moore is one of those people, you know, again, you can't you can't attack Beth Moore because she's, you know, the SBC golden child and she's Russell Moore's favorite person in the whole entire world. And so if you say anything bad about Beth Moore, you know, you're it's a hit piece. And so they've basically uh, they've they've basically said that it's a hit piece um, that that the the uh, it, it's done in poor taste. And um, they even did. um they they even did um, yeah Chris said they ran it down their throats. You, watch like so the documentary is done like they actually have like footage like so it's not like Tom Askell is just sitting on he's not just sitting on the couch giving his opinion on stuff like they did it in a really good way like that's like when I have conversations with people and I'm 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 quoting the Bible as a defense for whatever type of you know theology. And I'm just pointing to the text and get they're 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 like attacking me like like I'm showing you the example like how like you don't have a problem with me. You have a problem with the text then because I'm quoting scripture like that's what I'm using to defend my stance. The footage, as my wife said, it's unaltered. It's it's from the convention. And then they pull clips from other people of what they've said. Not doctored, like like stuff that they've just they've taught, that they've done in 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 they they've just they pulled the footage. That's all they did, and they made a documentary. And Doctor Askell does commentary in certain parts, and 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 he's talking about it, and he's offering his expertise on it. They they didn't like mash clips up together, you know. They didn't they didn't like like do sleight of hand tricks to make these people say stuff that they didn't say. They, they even like went so far as, okay. When the, um, when the trailer came out, everybody freaked out and said that, um, Dr. Askell and founders had, had, had painted them in the wrong light and they wanted their names removed from the documentary. And even though they had, um, they had signed off on, they were agreeing to be on this and, I have no reason to doubt that that these people were not like suckered into it or lied to. They they I I have no reason to doubt that. However, founders said, "Okay, we'll we'll pull your content." They did. They even offered to if they posted the entire conversation to to show that they weren't just taking things out of context and and twisting their words around. They offered to do that. They still said no. So they kind of had to redo some things, and so the 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 people that were left are, um, you know, they, they're they're there's conversations with with some great people, and the again the the documentary has received so much criticism for the tone, the tone police are, that's what like it 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 gets so funny that like that's the issue you know like like nobody is critiquing the the stuff that they're teaching it's the tone that they're using it's the way that it's edited that they make it look like it's this hit piece and they they put music in the background and like like listen man like like i've got like a studio in my basement and and i spend time doing editing to make things look good you when you do video you make it look presentable that's just what you do. And so, of course, they're going to do that with a documentary like this. Nobody has come out and, and, and said anything negative about the teaching. Because, again, they didn't pull things out of context. They 
are are, are they're, they're they're showing you exactly what is going on. And this is not just so like again, it's free. The documentary is free. It's 2 hours long. Dedicate 2 hours. You need to watch it because don't think, well, I'm not Southern Baptist, so it doesn't apply to me. It applies to you. Believe me. You need to see, because, and, and my wife and I were talking about this, and they even say it, uh, Dr. Askell says it, the terms critical race theory and, and intersectionality and, and, and this, the people that voted on it, I'm willing to bet they have no idea what those terms mean. And what's really crazy, and I'll, and I'll give this part away, is the way that the convention works is they bring these resolutions to the table. And then they give a description of what the resolution is, and then they um, they'll basically say to everybody, uh, all in favor, raise your card. Anybody opposed? Nope. Okay, so it passes. They do this through all of them. So what happens is they're on um, resolution 8. Um, the documentary is called uh, By What Standard? Uh, it is on founders.org. Founders Ministries, uh, they have the Sword in the Trial podcast. Um, they do all kinds of other stuff. They have some great books. Uh, it's their new documentary that just released. Uh, it's called By What Standard. So they're done with Resolution 8. They get to Resolution 9, okay, which is the critical race theory and intersectionality resolution. They say, okay, they want to they wanna hide Resolution 9 in with Resolution 10, 11, 12, and 13 and do a mass vote all at once on this. Now, how convenient, okay? that they were able to get through eight of these resolutions. And Dr. Askell even said it in the documentary. He says what they do is they up they, they front load these resolutions that are, are very easy, that, that they're not going to require much debate. They front load them so they can get through them. And then the ones at the end are typically the ones that are going to require a lot of discussion. Lo and behold, they get to resolution nine. And the gentleman that was on stage that was conducting this part of the, the conversation, he says, we move to have all of these looped together for the sake of time. They're out of time. They don't have time to discuss it or anything like that. And I mean, I, thankfully, they, they denied it. I didn't know that they did that. That was something that I learned because I was familiar with this whole thing because I watched it unfold. But I, I did not know that they tried to loop everything together. So so it's so they recognize again, they recognized that the people in attendance have no idea what. Yeah. And for, that's exactly what it was. They ran out of time. So they were just like they recognized that these people had no idea what this stuff was. And so they just said, we're just going to put it at the end and group everything together. And people are just going to vote because they want to get out of here. Like I've got, like I, I, I know people that were at the conference that were sitting next to people, and as they're talking about Resolution Nine, like they're up in arms because they want to leave and they want to go get food. That's what they cared about, and and so they, they, they honestly, I mean, they tried to sneak it in. It, it, you can't deny. I mean, you can't deny that that's what they tried to do. After watching, I mean, I looked at my wife. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I had no idea they tried to do that. They tried to just, you know, sneak it in. So what they did then is uh, Tom Buck, Dr. Askell, um, had um, their um, rebuttals prepared. They were, they were ready to defend, and um, they gave very, very solid answers as to why, um, as Dr. Askell calls it, a godless ideology, why it needs to be denied. Long story short, they didn't agree. The, the gentleman from Southern Baptist uh, Convention did not agree, and they ended up passing through resolution nine now the resolutions do not determine anything really they're there's like like guidance they're they're not like mandates so so resolutions in the southern baptist convention are not necessarily like bylaws that we have to follow but what it does and as dr askell says it gives you a little bit of a picture of where things are going of, of what's what's coming down the road so to say and unfortunately that's where it's heading now um, I've talked about this for a long time. My wife and I were just talking about it. I've talked about it with numerous people. I really think that the SBC is going to split one day. I, I, I do. I don't know how long it's going to be, um, but I just think it's going to happen. Um, I, I think that the SBC right now is trending in a direction that, again, I'm a Southern Baptist pastor, so I'm speaking from somebody who is in the trenches, like I'm involved with it, so I'm not just some outsider offering my critique, like this affects, um, this affects, you know, this is, this is, 
This is this is me. Like this is I'm, this is I'm I'm a part of the Southern Baptist system. I think they're going to split one day. I really do. The uprising in the Southern Baptist Convention of people that are laboring for solid theology is so strong right now. Like it's it's just wild. It, it is. That's another thing. For all the people in the Southern Baptist Convention that are poor in their theology, like Stephen Furtick is in the Southern Baptist Convention. Like he's a Southern Baptist grad. Like I don't think Elevation is, so to say, a Southern Baptist church any longer. However, Stephen Furtick was ordained a Southern Baptist pastor. He is a graduate of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He is, in all stretch of the imagination, a Southern Baptist pastor. So that's that's one example of Southern Baptist pastors is Stephen Furtick. Okay. But then you have guys like Dr. Askell. You have ministers like Founders. You have uh, Josh Bice. Uh, you, you have uh, Tom Buck. You have... Um, you have so much that that is that it, that there is a a core team being assembled inside the SBC that really um, that really care for the convention that they do you know that they they um, it doesn't take long to watch the documentary to see that. Um, it doesn't take long to see that these guys really care about the Southern Baptist Convention. And they've been a part of it for much longer than I have or ever will be. Um, they are, they're invested into it. But again, I, I, I just, I would not be surprised if if we see sooner than later, I, I mean, I, I would say within the, within the next 10 years, and that's probably even pushing it. If the Southern Baptist Convention continues in the direction that it is heading right now, there will be a split. I, I would be willing to guarantee it because again, there is so much laboring for right theology that is being promoted inside of the Southern Baptist convention. But then there is this resolution nine critical race theory stuff that's going on. Um, thank you, Derek. I appreciate your kind words. Um, there is, there's some, there's some friction, you know, and, and you gotta, you gotta, and so there's another part too. There is an interview that just like there's I, I, I'm going to watch this so many times over because there's so much stuff that I picked up on. And, and, and Dr. Askell makes a makes a, a comment. He's talking about, um, you know, the um, the the texts that talk about women pastors. Um, and he says something and I tweeted it the other day. He says it's not unclear. It's unpopular. And that speaks so much to what is happening inside the SBC right now because the there are guys that are like Al Mohler like he is um, he's a solid guy okay he is one of the guys that's in a tough situation he's the president of the largest seminary and he is um Scott says, what would you put the percentage of the split in viewpoints? 50, 50, 60, 40. It's less, it, it's greater um, for CRT and, and Resolution 9. Like that's like the, <coughs> excuse me, the, 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 the greater side of the Southern Baptist Convention is that stuff. Because the problem is, is a lot of the seminaries are adapting a lot of this stuff. So they're training future critical race theory advocates. So the trend is it's only going to get bigger. I would say it's 70-30. And, and, and that might even be a little low. It might be 80-20. Because that's that's the issue. The seminaries are really adapting it. Um, not all of them. Um, some are, are real bad. Some are eh, not so bad. But, you know, some some have not at all. They, they've, they've not. Some of them have just adopted it into their, their coursework. Like some of their classes are you're required to take these um on classes on critical race theory. They they want it to become part of your, you know, your your system, your theological framework. They they want it to be. But anyways, what I'm saying about Moeller is Moeller's in a tough spot because he's the president of the largest Southern Baptist convention. And so he speaks and he represents Southern Baptist uh, theological seminary. 
he's got to be careful with what he says. It's just plain and simple. At the end of the day, th- that's his employer. And any employer, is, 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 you need to represent properly. Um, so they have an interview with a guy from Lifeway. And, and, and the guy from Lifeway, I felt so bad for him because you could see that he wanted to, to defend. Um, I don't remember the exact way that it was phrased. Excuse me. But you can see that he's so hesitant to say what he actually wants to say. And he comes out and he says, I, I, I can't really speak on that because I represent Lifeway. That's kind of what is going on in the SBC. There, there's, there are these big names in the Southern Baptist Convention, and, and you can't speak out against them because there, you, you just, you can't disagree with what they're promoting. Lifeway promotes. Um, I'll let Lifeway answer that. That's exactly what he said. Thank you, David. Um, he said, and I looked. I couldn't believe it. Like I was just like that poor guy. But that's kind of what is going on with a lot of people in the SBC. There's a lot of people that are. There's a lot of people that that would if if Moeller wasn't I firmly believe that if Moeller wasn't the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary he'd be up there with Tom Askell speaking out against all this stuff I really believe that I um and I, I could be way off on that but that's just my assessment of a lot of the stuff that I've seen a lot of the conversations I've heard things like that um and, I mean then you can go and make the the argument of like well why is he allowing certain guys in a seminary to teach this stuff because it's happening at Southern. There, there's certain, um, like Matthew Hall, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Matthew Hall. He's the provost. Um, he, he's the guy that has adopted critical race theory, and it's ingrained into him now. He's, he says um, he's on video saying that he's a racist, and he will struggle with racism until the day that he dies, and he's always going to be a racist, and there's nothing he can do about it. It's critical race theory. There's... Um, couple other guys that have adopted this framework as well that are teaching uh, inside the seminary so you, then you could say like well why is Moeller allowing this to happen like if he's so against it why is he allowing people in his seminary to teach it and, and I don't have the answer to that I, I, I don't know um, I, I also don't know what I would do in a situation like that I would like to think that I'd put my foot down and say this is not what we're going to do he said at Shepherds this year that he's trying to keep the seminary and the SBC out of the hands of the liberals. Exactly. So he says stuff like that that he's trying to defend, uh, but but then because he's not so like adamant again, you see what I mean? Like like because his again his hands are tied. Like like he's he's Al Moeller. I mean he's not like like he's not me sitting behind my camera. Like like exactly he's treading lightly while holding to the sufficiency of scripture. Exactly. That's a great way of describing it because he says that in the documentary too. He, he affirms that also. Um, Chase, uh, thank you for helping me figure out which Logos version to purchase. Oh, good. I'm happy to hear that, man. I uh, will have to connect. I'd like to learn more about what you got and um, stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah, Logos is a big, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Logos. <laughs> I'm sure many of you know that. But um, let, me, let me close with this because we're, we're approaching an hour and, and I'm just going to start coughing. I can feel it. Um, I was sick all last week. Um, got my wife sick and still I'm not hundred percent back yet. So I don't want to start coughing on, <coughs> see, I told you, um, I don't want to keep coughing every five seconds. So let me just end with this. Like, like watch the documentary first and foremost, because, because it, it's, it's a fan, I mean, it's just a fantastic documentary. Like it, like it really, Again, nobody's going to do a better job of explaining what critical race theory is than the people that are promoting critical race theory. And that's what this documentary is. Like, it's again, it's not like Dr. Askell is just like making stuff up and he's reading on a, on a piece of paper and he's saying, well, so-and-so said this and so-and-so. No, they like play the video of the person actually saying it. There is no way that you can twist any of this stuff. It's exactly what they're saying. So, so watch... Um, Watch the the documentary for that reason, so you can learn exactly what is being taught. Like, don't listen to me about it. Um, listen to these guys. You know that that's something that I always try to I always try to pride myself on going to the source. And so, if I've ever done like a like a a, a very uh, in depth critique of like Bill Johnson, for example, I've played his sermon and we just walk through it. 
because it's his stuff. Like, then you can't say, like, well, I'm taking his stuff out of context because I'm just playing his stuff. And that's what they do. But it makes you aware of what's really happening. Like, like I think, and again, I said it earlier, a lot of these people have no idea what critical race theory is. A lot of these people hear that... Um, a lot of these people hear that, um, you know, they're fighting out against racism. And they think, well, automatically that's good. And yeah, absolutely. It's good. <laughs> uh, you can't be a Christian and, and, and be a racist. I've said that now all along and I don't understand like, uh, but this gives you an understanding of what is actually happening. It really does because there's more to it than just, you know, like we're trying to combat racism like that. That's not, we're, we're trying to, to rewrite the framework on which we, we see the world. We, we, we are trying to um, adapt, again, godless ideologies that determine how we interact with the culture. And again, there is no better way to learn about it than right from the source. <coughs> so I'm going to stop there because I'm going to start coughing really badly. All right. Um. If you joined late, um, the podcast will be available later tonight, first thing in the morning. YouTube video is already uh, probably processing and will be available. You can start over again if you'd like to. If you are interested in uh, chatting about the episode, um, go to TheologyNights.com and click on the Contact Me link. Um, my email address is on there. You can send me an email. Uh, I'd love to uh, schedule a time to chat more with you. Um, I'd love to... Um, you know, help you in any way that I can, disciple you, um, give you some advice on resources, um, podcasts to listen to, uh, anything like that. Because another big thing about our platform is we are always trying to point people to others. Like we're, we're I, we, um, I, I know that there's others that are better than me. And I know that there's others that, that, that edify me on a daily basis. And I want you guys to be exposed to them um, just as much as I expose uh, my, my family to that solid teaching. So we're always trying to promote others. Um, so if you have somebody in mind that you think uh, needs to get some more exposure, uh, send me some links. I'd be happy to look over them. And if they're a good fit, uh, we will we'll definitely put them on the rotation and, and, and get some information out about them. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping in. Very good show. Uh, next week we will be, it's going to be Monday. I think it's going to be Monday. Um, because next week's schedule is <sighs> Christmas. Christmas is Wednesday. Christmas Eve is Tuesday. So we'll be busy Christmas Eve service and then family Christmas Eve and then all day Christmas will be busy. So 23rd, Monday. Let's let's shoot for that. Um, again, I have a... Um, we'll probably do it closer to the New Year's show. Um, New Year's Eve show. Like We'll probably do it again um, that Monday night. Um, we'll do it not New Year's Eve because I'll go to bed. And, um, that's when, you know, you're an adult, like, like, so my, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. It was good to see you, man. I appreciate you stopping by and, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to connect soon. Um, I, oh, you know what? And I'll just tell you this now, cause I was going to send you a message about it. Um, and we can chat more about it. So Chris and I have a mutual love for bang energy drinks. Chris, I have some sad news to report to you, brother. I am officially off the, the, the bang kick. I had my last, well, I, I'm saying this now, and I'm really, this is honestly like the, the most most I've, I've ever been serious about doing this, but I really think I'm going to give up caffeine. Uh, I'm going to allow myself the occasional cup of coffee, but I've just gotten to the point to where I'm drinking so much caffeine, it is just throwing off everything in my life. Um, you know, I mean, my, I, um... I'm now going to rant about my health, and I'm sure you guys are all just really curious. You can just turn off if you don't want to hear about this, but you're stuck anyways. Um, I have, I have, I, Chris says no. I know. I'm sorry, buddy. Again, I'm going to, I'll, I'll allow myself, you know, the, the occasional, you know, one here and there, but um, I, I got, I got to do something about it. It's just, it's, I, I can, I, I feel it. Um, my insomnia is just out of control. And, and like, there's, um, there's times like, um, you know, I take medication for it and, you know, we, we just, but either way, there's times that I have insomnia and I, uh, it just takes me a couple hours to fall asleep and then I can fall asleep and it's fine. Um, 
the, my insomnia lately has just been so bad that I, it's like my brain doesn't know how to sleep. Like it, like it has forgotten that I actually can go to sleep. My, my brain does not like, it's strange. I came down. So this past weekend I got two hours of sleep. Yeah. Like between Friday night and then Sunday into Sunday. Well, yeah. So Friday night, Saturday night, I got two hours of sleep. I slept Friday. No, it would have been Saturday morning. I, it was like 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. I, I slept for two hours. I didn't sleep again until Sunday night. And then you know what happened is I slept through all of my alarms on Monday. I got a good solid night of sleep for the first time because I don't ever sleep the whole night through. Like I at least get up once or I'm tossing and turning or, you know, but I slept the whole entire night through. Didn't wake up once. And you know what happened? I slept through all of my alarms. That's the punishment that I get for sleeping good for once. That's the, like, I'll sleep good one time a year. I burned it on that night and, and I felt so bad. And I set lots of alarms too. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like there's been times like where I know that I've woken up and I've just shut my alarm off. Like I did that for five different alarms and then slept an hour past it when I was supposed to get up. It was a big mistake. But anyways, all of that to say, that was what I was going to message you about uh, today, actually, because I told my wife like a couple hours ago. I just like I, I got really convicted this morning. Like I'm trying to, you know, I'm 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 trying to be really. Um, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to like, you know, I like I'm I'm seeing doctors and I'm and I'm getting tests done and I'm uh, taking medication and and I'm doing so much. Um, I do actually, yeah, Chase. I do have uh, sleep apnea. Um, and, and my problem is my insomnia is so bad that when I, when I wear my CPAP machine, it causes my insomnia to skyrocket and I can't fall asleep. Therefore, I can't use the machine. So then I just take the machine off and I don't use it. And then even if I do sleep, I don't feel good. So I've just been, I've just been stuck in this really bad cycle for a while. So we've been trying different medications and, 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 and so we're almost there. We're almost there. But basically what I, what I was trying to say was um, I, I just kind of got to the point to where I realized... Um, um, Jason says not having too much of an understanding of the SBC. Should I hold off on the documentary? I would say no, I, I'd watch it because you're going to hear these terms pop up a lot. Um, and I think it's good to be aware of what the terms actually mean. Um, so no, I, I don't think you have to be a specific SBC guy in order to be, um, encouraged by the documentary. Um, I, I, and again, because it's founders, you know, the, the, they're a solid ministry. So, so I, I, I think everybody needs to watch this stuff. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, and I'll close with this thought, cause now I've just been rambling. I got to the point to where I'm like, I'm doing all this stuff to try to get my health in order with medication and with seeing doctors and getting tests done and stuff like that. And then I'm not taking care of my body. Therefore I'm like defeating, you know, cause like I have medication that's trying to help me. And then I also have like 900 milligrams of caffeine a day that I drink. And that's not a joke. And I mean, I can, I can drink, you know, caffeine and, and, and it's not like, I'm not like bouncing off. Like, it's just, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't really do much, uh, for me, but I just got convicted. I was like, it, you know, if I really want to try to get better then then I, you know, cause it's affected, uh, you know, I'd love to say that like when I, um, have my, you know, cause I'll, I'll get up, uh, my office is downstairs in the basement, um, and so I, I leave bed and I come downstairs and me and the dogs come down here and I sit, I sit in my office. I'd love to tell you that I sit down here for hours upon hours and I read scripture and stuff like that. I can't even do that because I'm just in this like state of like nothingness. Now, every once in a while, I, I, I do get some work done and, and I try to make it, uh, you know, beneficial, but more times than not, I mean, it's like, I'm just gassed and I don't have the energy to do it. And even if I, if, if I did, it wouldn't be anything worthwhile because it's, you know, but thankfully, um, we're making progress. We're making progress. Uh, yeah, melatonin is like I could power through melatonin. I use it as a backup. Um, it is. Um, it's. Um, Chris says nine hundred. I could barely have one. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I hate to admit it, but yeah, I can. I could do two or three a day without a problem. Not every single day, like for weeks upon week, but I mean, I, I just, I, it got really bad. I mean, it re I, I will admit it. It got really bad. I just like, like I, um, I got so hooked on the peach, man. That that's what did it. Uh, I'm allergic to Lanesta. So that's one of the, I like that we're having this conversation now. Um, we're going to talk about all the sleep medication that I've taken. Uh, Lunesta I'm allergic to. Um, I actually, um, so it was really weird. Um, 
I had moved. That was Lunesta was like my third medication that we tried. And then we went back to the, I forget how the pattern went. So like that, but it was in there just recently, like a couple months ago, uh, took it. And like moments later, I started getting this metal taste and I was like, that's kind of weird. And I woke up the next morning and I was sick to my stomach and I was nauseous and I was, I had a horrible headache and I was like, well, you know, that happens every once in a while. So I didn't think a big deal of it. Next night comes and I take the medication and then moments later, metal. And I'm talking metal. Like everything is just tasting like metal. Go to sleep, wake up the next morning, felt the same exact way. So I jumped on the line like I always do. And I started doing some research and like 5% of people that take Lunesta have those symptoms. And so they pulled me off of it right away. So I, um, I don't take that any longer. Um, so that's been one of them that I've taken. Uh, I did, that did not work. I power through stuff. I have a really just a, I, like my, um, my tolerance for this stuff is, and I mean, it's just, I power through it and, uh, I've had tests done and, and I actually go in a couple, not next couple, actually January. So it'd be a couple weeks. Um, I had a med test done to like actually determine how different meds affect me because, you know, I, I just, I power through stuff and, uh, I just doesn't affect me the same way. Same thing with caffeine. Like, um, you know, some of the, uh, I'm not going to go into all my diagnosis and stuff like that. Um, we, um, yeah, they said it was allergic reaction to it. Um, because they said if, because I had the headache, nauseous and the metal taste, taste um that means i'm allergic to it so they put it on as something that i can't take so um but but some of my um like some of my my um some of my uh diagnosis are um caffeine just does not affect me like it affects normal people and it's just like because of some of the mental health stuff that i have and things like that um but either either way i i don't remember why i was going down that rabbit trail all of that to say you guys got to hear um, why I'm not going to drink caffeine any longer. Again, I'm not cutting it completely out because I can't. Um, I um, I love it too much in order to give it up completely, uh, but I am going to cut it out. Um, I think uh, I'm going to take like, I'll have one cup of coffee a week on Saturdays, but other than that, and that's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, all right, we're done. Um, we'll be back next week, uh, Monday, probably 730. Uh, send me some messages and comments and questions, and we'll get a show together for uh, next week. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave them on the video. Uh, send me a message on Facebook. I'll see you guys next week. See you. <laughs>